August saw the release of the highly anticipated Total Skyrim conversion mod Enderall from the German modding team Sure AI. It provides a new world, combat, magic, and leveling system, and new storylines giving a completely different experience from Skyrim. The mod requires a separate launcher that converts your Skyrim game into Enderall. This means special instructions for downloading all the files, the launcher itself, and how to go about doing the installation. This video starts with the basics, where to get all the needed resources, installing them into your game, launching Enderall, and of course, uninstallation. We then move on to integrating Mod Organizer and using it to launch Enderall and modify it with compatible mods. Finally, we'll go about creating a separate parallel installation of Enderall to go along with Skyrim and again using Mod Organizer. Be aware that the later portions of this video relating to Mod Organizer require prior knowledge of the modding tool and are not for new users. Hey guys and gals, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel, and in this video we're going to be covering the installation for Enderall. Of course, Enderall released back for the German version a few weeks ago, and I was hotly anticipating the release of the English version and it has arrived and I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. The basic installation, de-installation, the settings, all the different steps you have to go through, where to get all the files and whatnot. And then in the later parts of the video, we'll show you how to integrate it with Mod Organizer. And then finally, how to do a parallel installation for both Skyrim and Enderall together so you don't have to deinstall and install back and forth so you can play both games at the same time without having to go through all the steps. So let's get started and we will first go show you where some of the files are that you need to get and we will go to the internet. And this is the sureai.net site. This is the parent homepage for Enderall. And if you wanted to go ahead and read through this stuff, here's the launch trailer. And it'll give you some, you know, nice highlights on what you'll be expecting in the game. And over here on Enderall release, if you click on this site, it will lead to this page. And you can see setting up Enderall. Welcome Traveler, this site is to help you install Enderall. Great. Hey, wait, what is Enderall? It'll lead you back to the sureai.net site. So this is the system requirements. You can see all the system requirements, installation package, whatever else right there. You go ahead and click this first to go to the system requirements. And you'll see the, you know, it is a complete overhaul of Skyrim. So it requires quite a few things. And here are the minimum system requirements. Of course, most of us have a little bit more than this, but you know, it's probably a good idea to review your specs and know if you're going to be able to play the game at a high enough level so you can enjoy it. Of course, Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, the Steam game, and this is very important, the Steam edition. And we'll get into this later, but I can, you know, move on and get to the next thing. The installation package is the next one, and download the installation package from one of these sources. You have a torrent site the moddb.com site, and of course the nexusmods.com site, which I recommend using because I use Nexus Mods for just about everything. And if you were to click on this one, it will lead to the Nexus page for Enderall English version. There is a German version, of course, out there. It was released a few weeks ago, but this is the version you want if you are an English speaker like me. You go to the file section, you can, you know, read all this stuff. It's basically the same as what we talked about on Sure AI. Go to the files, and the first thing you're going to grab is Enderall English version. And you're gonna to have to download that manually, but it is going to be quite a large size. We're talking eight plus gigabytes in size. So it's gonna take quite a while to do so, but just be patient, it's well worth it. And thanks to the Nexus, they can have host sites that are much larger like this. You're gonna download that manually to wherever you, or wherever you download things and go ahead and then put it on your desktop. I have it right here, it is a .gz file, which is basically just another way of a zip file. You open this up and take a look. It's going to have data, a new version of SKSE, and we'll talk about, you know, mod integrations later on, but you can see it has a new version of SKSE already included because it is integrated with the mod. We'll go back to the internet and go back to the interall.com site, and you can see this is where we'll hit launcher. And it is going to need a launcher for it. And you go ahead and click download on this. And it's going to download wherever you put your downloads. And then go ahead and place that also on your desktop when it's all done. You can see there are two files you need for this. The zip file and the launcher.exec. And we'll go ahead and continue on with everything else so you can see what we're doing. Installation. 
Just select the installation file, which contains the data needed for installing and draw. And now the installation process can begin. And then it will recommend you to update it. I will show you how to do that once we get into the launcher. Go and click update and then update your version and you're ready to go and you're all done. And you can start playing and draw. And it leaves you all these links. Now I'm gonna point out a couple things that you'll probably want to know for later on. On the sure.ai, sureai.net site, there's a form. We'll refer back to that later on once we start getting into modding Enderall. But for now, go ahead and minimize this down. So what do we do with these two files? We have them both right here and we are going to need to install them. I of course have my Skyrim file ready to go. You can see this is my default installation for Skyrim. It already has mod organizer installed right there. And it has a bunch of other things that I use all the time for mod organizer. I want you to see, you know, my Skyrim setup is basically how I use it all the time. And this is going to be what we do with this. I'm going to drag the zip file in here and it's going to copy over and we'll just let it do its work. But there is a reason for doing this and we can go ahead and discuss that in a second. So it is installed right there. Now, the Enderall launcher will automatically detect wherever you put the Steam version of Skyrim. That becomes relevant later on when we try to do parallel installs. But for right now, you can go ahead and click on it. And it's gonna give you a warning. Don't worry about this warning. You know, Windows is trying to protect your PC because they're overly you know, cautious about stuff like this. More info and run anyways. Okay, and the first window we're going to get is Enderall Launcher is not within the Skyrim root directory. The application will close and restart in the correct directory, which of course is the Steam install, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim. Go and click OK. This is the README file. It's always going to open this up, but I want you to be able to know where it is in your Skyrim directory. We'll minimize that down for right now. There we go. Clean that up. Evidently, I clicked it twice. So of course we have the launcher right here. We'll minimize that down. I want you to see kind of where it put things. Even though we installed it over here, it wanted to be inside the Steam directory. So what you've got now, you don't see the Steam, the start ender all. I'm going to drag it and put that over into Skyrim so you can have that in your main file directory also. So those are all the pieces in there. If you had placed the launcher.exec directly into your Steam Skyrim directory, it would stay there and it wouldn't bounce out. That's why I keep extra copies because you know, we're in my downloads, there's the Enderall launcher right there. But that's kind of how it does things. That's, you know, relevant later on, but I want you to see how it was going to work. It's always going to auto detect wherever you have the Steam version of Skyrim. Why they do that is for, I guess, ease of use, but that's how they did it and that's how it's going to be. So we'll go back to the launcher and you see right here, you don't have any active buttons, but if you want to click the form, it'll lead there, click the wiki. There's not much to see there, and of course, news. And if you could quit it if you like to. But we're going to install Enderall, and you'll get a warning. Enderall is based on its own ESM master file. We cannot guarantee compatibility with Skyrim mods. We will discuss this later. EMBs in particular can significantly damage the game experience by disabling important functions such as fade outs and other graphical effects. Just click on the uh, rust colored box right there, and it will lead to your terms of licensing. Go ahead and click Accept, and you're going to get the install for Enderall. This assistant guide will guide you through the installation of Enderall. Please select the button Install Enderall to proceed. And you can see it's going to have all these little check boxes if you meet all the requirements. Of course, I do because I have a pretty heavy duty uh, rig, but you can go ahead and click Install. And it's going to say Choose your installation type. If you'd already installed Enderall before, you would have this restore enderall button. But we are installing it for the first time in this directory. So go ahead and select that and it's going to show users, weasel, dirty weasel, desktop, enderall, engz. And of course, I don't want that because that's the one that's over on my desktop. I'm going to choose the one that's in the main file directory right there because I wanted to keep track of that. So we would go, of course, go into Skyrim. Scroll down and there's the Enderall of the CZ. Open that up. And of course, now we have Steam, Steam Apps Common, Skyrim, Enderall, and install English.gz. So that looks good to me. And the reason why I have that that way is so that if I completely uninstall Enderall, it knows where it's going to be deleting the files. Go ahead and click Next. 
a backup copy of your Skyrim folder will be created. And this is an important thing is that it will take all the files that it's removing from Skyrim and don't panic while hearing that. It will put it into a backup file and you can reinstall it later. It will put it all back. Don't worry about that. I've tested it a number of times. It's perfectly safe. But that is fine for me. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, and draw launcher and it'll create a new folder for that and it'll be in the backup. That's fine. If you want to change the path, you can do that, but you need to click this box first. But I suggest just leaving this as it is. Go and click next. And you can see it's selected the file path for the Skyrim backup and the Enderal installation path are both basically matching up so that it looks good. Start the installation. And it's going to start copying all the files into the backup version of Skyrim so it can access them later. Let it go through its process and you will get, it takes quite a while, but it will do its work and just let it work. Okay, we are now starting part two of two, and it's now installing all of the Enderall files. You can see that it first thing is starting off with data slash EEN meshes.bsa. It's copying all these over. This actually takes longer than the first section, so you know just let it do its work. And when it's all done, we'll get back to you and we'll show the first message. Okay, we're approaching the end here. And it didn't really take that long. It only took about four minutes on my system. So maybe, you know, about the same, maybe longer, maybe a little bit shorter, depending on your own system configurations. But we are approaching the end. Okay, and you see now, congratulations, Enderall has now installed. Check for patches by pressing the update button to install them. Enderall will be patched repeatedly, delivering bug fixes and new content into your game. Installation is done. We can go ahead and click that. And of course it's said to update, and that's the first thing we're going to do on this before doing anything else, we're going to click the update button. And when you click on that, you can see update 1.1.02 is the download now. So this is the second update that they've had for since the version 1.1.00. And you go ahead and click that, and it's going to start the download. And just let it, the same thing, let it do its thing, and it will tell you when it's all done. Okay, the update was successful. The launcher will now be restarted. Click OK. And it will open it back up for you. So we are now fully updated. And we can now go ahead and just talk about some of the other things. You have the launch and draw button right here, which will actually play the game. You have the data files if you're going to try to manage different mods. And I don't recommend doing this, so we're just moving on. We'll just go ahead and cancel that. And then you have settings. And this is going to be the next thing we're going to talk about. The interall mod has a number of mods integrated into them. And one of them is one tweak. You know, I'm a big fan of one tweak. I use it in the 2016 Skyrim modding guide all the time. And you will go ahead and just go ahead and click that. And you have the ability to change different things. Now, of course, you have VSync, which is always a good idea, unless you're using something else to go ahead and control your frames per second, whether it's Ian Boost, and it will work. Trust me, it will work. You'll see that when we first start the game and you have window mode. Now, I'm gonna click off windowed mode because I was having issues with how it works, which is kind of weird because one tweak normally doesn't cause me to have problems with windowed mode, but that's the way it is. So I'm gonna click that off. When you come over to aspect ratio, user defined, it is minus 16 by nine, good enough. But if you click on that, you'll see my resolution's not here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and go to user defined, and I'm going to manually put in, because there is no one for mine, I'm going to put in 2560 space X space 1440. So that will actually render a full screen in 2560 by 1440p. You have anti-aliasing options here. This will decrease performance, and this will decrease performance a little bit less, but anti-aliasing always decreases performance. And then you have graphics quality. I went ahead and tested it at Ultra, but of course I wanted to change the anti-aliasing to eight times and 16 times. If you are using the NVIDIA settings and you may not have any anti-aliasing already installed because it is a, a drain, and you may be using something else, go ahead and set these to none, best performance. You probably won't see a difference or you can set anti-aliasing to eight or whatever you prefer, but that's how you do this. Because I have anti-aliasing already managed through the NVIDIA card, I'm going to put anti-aliasing at none. Graphics quality, you can see, go ahead, and I click Ultra already, and then we go into details. 
You can see water reflect ground, reflect trees, reflect objects. We're going to leave those all there. You have also FXAA, which is another type of anti-aliasing. If you turned it off in the first page, you may want to have this clicked on if you don't have any other options, but this is another option for you. Textures, blur quality, shadow details, decal count, those are all set by the Ultra. Leave them as they are. Visibility, you can see they're all set to maximum. Field of view is 75. That's about right for me. And distant details on distant objects is set to very high. Audio, you have general volume, music, voices, effects, footsteps. I go ahead, I always turn my music down a little bit because it gets a little overwhelming and sometimes. And your general volume, I'll turn mine down to seven. So the maximum effects, seven. Voices, we'll put this down to seven, eight, somewhere around there as well. I may play with this later on, but nothing will change inside the game. This is just your initial any settings. Go to game. You can see it has an auto save feature. It can auto save every 15 minutes. You can save while resting or save while waiting. These are entirely up to you. I have a tendency to turn these off. And I just let the auto save manager do that just fine. It has kill cams already installed and you can go ahead and change the settings there. I'm leaving mine at adept and the interface show dialog subtitles, common subtitles and show crosshair. You can also set the HUD visibility ahead of time. And of course, I always set mine down to 75. Optimization, you can see how much RAM I have and how many GP CPUs I have. I'm going to set it at four. That seemed to be fine. Experimental multi-threading, unless you know what you're doing, do not mess with these. Other settings, you can have, you can see the Skyrim.any file and the Skyrimpress.any file. You can see all the changes it's just making and the save game directory. It'll show you where it's saving all your games. Of course, mine is the same as as my Skyrim directory. And of course the launcher log, it will show you everything it has to do with the launcher log. So it has all those. Screenshots are enabled, screenshot index, eh, I'll leave it at zero is fine. And launch steam at launcher.start. You can either leave that ticked or unticked. I leave it ticked because I like it having safe. Activate gamepad, sure. Gamepad vibration, sure. I just, cause I play with a 360 controller. And of course, mount sensitivity, I always turn mine down. And if you're one of those people that like having an inverted cursor, you can click there. Go ahead and save those settings. We are going to go ahead and we've covered all these things. We can come back to change the installation later on, but we are going to launch Enderall. And this is very important. You need to launch Enderall at least once before doing anything else. Go ahead and launch Enderall. And if all your settings are looking good, you can see Mine looks pretty good. It filled the screen out well. It looks like the resolution's fine. And you can see EN Boost is working as prescribed. So you can see I have Continue. You may not have this as if it's a first time install. And then you have New. I want you to go ahead and click New. Explore under all, yes. And if everything worked as, as needed, you, you can go ahead and see that we are in Enderall. And this is the opening scene. This is probably the, the one scene I, I saw in testing that actually dropped my frames per second. You can see it's down to 51. And later testing through the first dungeon, I had no issues. You turn back this way, I'm back up to 60. Turn this way, I'm down to 51, 50, somewhere around there. So that's not an issue. So we now know it works when everything goes wrong just fine. You can see the world is very, very pretty, but we need to cancel out of this. Go ahead and escape out. Yes, it's the first message. And I want you to quit. Go back to your desktop. Now that you've run that, we can go ahead and minimize this down. And I'm going to minimize that as well. We need to do a couple things. I want you to go into your documents. Open this up in a spare page here. I want you to go into My Games. I want you to go into Skyrim. And you can see the any and the Skyrim prefs.any. We are going to take both of these. Just control click and we're going to copy, and we're gonna place them on our desktop. And the reason why we do this is so we have them later on, but I want you to be able to see what's going on in here. So let's go ahead and open this one up, and you can see it you know, has a bunch of changes, but under the S Resource Archive List and S Resource Archive List 2, this is the one for Enderall, E-E-N. So you can see it's actually, this is the updated any file for Enderall, because it has all these changes. 
We're going to close that down because I wanted you to have copies of these and we can close this down. It's not that important. So let's talk about what Enderall made changes to. If you scroll down and you look at everything, okay, you got the start Enderall button. You can go ahead and start Enderall that way. You can go into the launcher and make any changes and you can also run the game that way. And if you go up to data and you look, you don't have any of your DLC. You don't see Dawn Guard, you don't see Dragonborn. All you see is EEN. That is perfectly normal. But everything looks about the same as it did before. So one other thing to note on this is the Enderall launcher. Remember we made backups. See backup, Skyrim, data, and there's all your Dragonborn, Dawn Guard, Hearthfires, your high resolution text pack. All that stuff is in there. Just so you know what's going on, so you're fully aware of what is hap actually happening. You've played Enderall. Let's say you've played Enderall for a number of hours and you want to go back to playing Skyrim. How do you change that? How do you transfer back and forth so you can play Skyrim again? Well, the thing is, when you do it this way, you're going to need to change the installation and let Enderall put all those files back to where they had them. Does that make sense? Good. And what you're going to do is go ahead and click Change Installation. And this is after you've done playing Enderall and you want to go back to playing Skyrim. And this is how you're going to restore all the files back into your main Skyrim directory. Change Installation. Uninstall installation. You can now remove Enderall from your system and revert to your Skyrim folder to its state prior to the Enderall installation. You can go ahead and click uninstall Enderall. And it will run you through the installer. And I'll just do that real quick. And you can see select delete Enderall. It will delete all the Enderall game data from your computer and you, you'd select that one. Or you can select archive Enderall if you'd like to keep your Enderall installation backed up for a possible future install. Select that if you expect to go back at any time, and it will create a backup of Enderall this time and reinstall Skyrim completely with all your DLC. However you want to do that is fine. It depends on your personal thing. I'm going to go ahead and click back, and I'm going to quit. And the reason why I'm doing this is so we can have Enderall installed in our main Skyrim directory. That is your basic install. That is how you do it completely and how you change back and forth, and how you install, uninstall, and switch back and forth between Skyrim. So let's talk about Mod Organizer. Remember my Skyrim directory? I had Mod Organizer filled out. And you can see my 2016 Skyrim modding guide. I use it all the time. Let's open up Mod Organizer and see what's happened now that we've got that installed. Open this up. And you can see... I'm going to have a whole bunch of problems because this is my dirty weasel profile. You're going to see I'm going to have a whole bunch of these missing master notices here. And that's kind of relevant. So we are going to go ahead and do a couple of things. We need to create a profile for Enderall. We are going to go ahead and go to manual and vanilla. And the reason why we're doing that is so we can see everything's been deselected. And over here, all you have is skyrim.esm and update.esm. All the DLCs, all the high resolution picture packs are gone. Okay, everything else is now in, in alphabetical order. So go back in and manage again, and we are going to create a copy of vanilla. Highlight vanilla and create a copy. And it's going to please enter a name for the new profile. Go ahead and just for now create Enderall and click OK. For this, we are going to go ahead and make sure our automatic archive and validation is checked and local save games is checked as well if you want to have a separation on your save games for just the Enderall installation so you don't have all your other save games popping up. You can go ahead and close that down. Go back in and select Enderall. And there's a couple different important things we need to talk about. You see plugins are all blank. Archives. If you go down and you look, all the archives are not checked. You need to check all of them to make this work. Make sure to have mod organizer manage the archives. Read more if you want to know more. Data, you can see all the uh, Enderall files right there. Saves, there are no saves. Downloads, this is my download file that access from Skyrim, the uh, normal, my normal Skyrim directory, but you can see all my mods are installed over here.
So here is how you play the game. You see SKSE is selected. You do not need to use the Inderall launcher to launch Inderall from Mod Organizer. You can simply launch it via Skyrim or the SKSE launcher as per normal. And we'll see that exactly right now. See, it launches it just fine. We're gonna quit that again because there's, we're not quite done with what some of the things we need to do. You'll notice over here in your tools, your any editor, if you scroll down, you may not see, yep, there it is, the archives. The S resource archive, it doesn't list the EEM stuff. So your any files are not correct. We're gonna close that down. We go back into our Skyrim directory and you go into Mod Organizer and you go into Profiles, you can see there is a profile for Enderall. Open that up, and you can see Skyrim.ini and Skyrimprefs.ini, and this is why I had you save those two files already. So you can go ahead and copy these, control click, just drag them over and plop them in, and replace the files in the destination. So when you open up your Skyrim Any again, and you look, there's your Enderall stuff, your S resource archive list to Enderall. Close that down. And now when you open up your any editor again, you can see down the archives, there it is. So now all of your any files are now correct and copacetic with Enderall. So you can now run the game. You could install files, mods that are listed to work. And we will go talk about that in just a second. But for, you know, for right now, I'll just show you how this works. Let's go. Um, what's one that I tested that worked already? See, I'm not used to seeing this in, uh, in alphabetical order. I'm used to seeing it in my load order. Like iHUD. Priority, we'll just back up at the priority so you can see. iHUD is listed there. I probably want to put this up high. There we go. So if you're listing this by priority, this is now the highest priority. All your mods that are not activated are down here. So this is the first one now. Everything I generally have it listed by priority so I can keep track of things rather than by mod name. But now you have iHUD all ready to go. And iHUD works. Let's go check it out. There you go. Initially using iHUD version 3.0.2. So it's all ready to set. One registered. MCN menu, that's probably Sky UI, and there's the other one, that's iHUD. If you go ahead and escape, go to Mod Configuration, Immersive HUD. It's all ready to go. And of course you have Sky UI, is already integrated into the mod. Very cool, huh? So it will work this way. Go ahead and quit out of that. And now you can go ahead and uh, play Inderall with Mod Organizer. And we already discussed how to go ahead and use the launcher to go back into your game. Come on, open up for me. Thank you. Go back into your game. If you want to uninstall Inderall or change back and forth, you would use the Inderall launcher again to change the installation. If that's all clear, good. We're going to move on. And I'm going to actually uninstall completely all the Enderall launcher, all the Enderall files from this installation by clicking change installation. And we will come back when I'm all done and talk about the next subject, making parallel versions of Enderall and Skyrim. Okay, and we are back. I've uninstalled everything for Enderall out of my main Skyrim directory and put it all back. If you see under data, you can see I have all my Dongar, Dragonborn, Hearthfires, all that good stuff already back in there and it, it's all back to normal. And this is the reason why I don't like doing that sometimes because if you open a mod organizer again, you're gonna see all this stuff is now out of order. And you over here, Dongar, Dragonborn, Hearthfire is all out of, out of whack. I don't need to do that because it's like got a broom. Well, it's all out of order again. I have to go ahead and run loot. Reorder my mods, come back over, move all this stuff around. I gotta move Dongard back up. I gotta move Hearthfires to there. Dragonborn after that, and then the unofficial Skyrim patch. 
So you can see you got to move things around. It doesn't quite put everything back the way you expect it. So I'm not a big fan of that. You know, everything looks like it will work just fine and it will run just fine. But just because it has problems, you have to, you know, go through and double check things and you have to double check again to make sure it's all back the way it used to be. That's the problem when you uninstall it and then reinstall Skyrim again. It kind of messes things up and I don't like it that way. Because I do modding tutorials, I want to be able to run back and forth in and out as ever I want. So what I decided to do is make a parallel install. I'm just going to open this up so you can go see it. What I did was I have the Skyrim and I made a complete copy of it, named it Skyrim Enderall, and I went in and I cleaned out most of the crap out of it that I didn't need for it. You know, the Papyrus compiler can stay. Uh, but basically this as close to base install as you can get right here. There's a few other things that I've got in here that I want to keep. But this is, you know, probably pretty much a base version of Skyrim as much as you're going to get. So remember we had the two files over here, the zip file that has all the documents or the, all the data files, and then you have the launcher. We're going to install this as a parallel. So I'm going to take both of these. I'm going to drag them and drop them into my new Skyrim Enderall folder. Let them copy over. And as a note, this is not the only way of doing this. This is the way I decided to do it. If you find some way that works best for you, go ahead and do this. This is the way I wanted to do it. When I first did this, I, I thought, well, we're going to have a problem because the Enderall launcher.exec, and we'll show this to you real fast. When you launch this, it's going to give you a message. Yeah, we know. Run right, anyways. It's going to give you the message that the Enderall launcher is not within the Skyrim root directory. Okay, that's a problem. Go and click OK, close this down, close that, close that down. And where did it put it? Well, it put it back into our normal Skyrim directory. And you can see Enderall launcher's there, Enderall launcher's there. So we need to delete these and we need to find another solution. And this is what I did. I have to trick, make sure that's the right thing. I have to trick the launcher into thinking that Enderall is this default Skyrim. And the way you do that is go ahead and rename it. And all I did was I simply put an underscore in front of it. And there's that. So you can see it's underscore. And then you need to rename Skyrim Enderall to just plain Skyrim. So it now thinks that it is Steam, Steam Apps, Skyrim. So we've tricked it. But this is the Enderall installation, and that's why I tell you to put the all these files in here. We need to copy this one again because it removed it from this file, remember? Drag it over and drop it in. And we are going to go ahead and remove that one as well because it will create a new one. So we are now back to where we need to be. So in this, because it is now tricked into thinking this Skyrim Enderall is now the normal Steam Skyrim, go ahead and double click the Enderall launcher, go through this process again, run it anyways. And you can see it didn't redirect it this time. It thinks it's fine. And you're going to have this file right here. I'm going to close that down. So now you can go ahead and install Enderall the same way you did before. Enderall installation, click next. Change backup path, nope. Steam, Steam App Skyrim. Enderall install GC. It found the zip file just fine this time. Click next. Change backup path. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, Enderall, Launcher, Backup, click Next. Pass looks fine. Start the install. Okay, that's done. We're going to click Update. Install the update. Now we can go into our Settings file and do all the same thing we did before. And we can go ahead and launch Enderall. And the reason why we're doing this is that we want to be able to test everything out. Go ahead and click New again. And it looks good. We can go ahead and click out of that. We can go ahead and close that down. Go back to our desktop. 
So, Indrawl is completely installed as per the first section of this guide. And, you know, what you're going to do is go ahead and, you know, just go ahead and close this down. What you've done is made a duplicate copy. And the reason why we go through the entire setup with the update and the settings and all that stuff, so it is all set and ready to go. We are tricking the launcher into thinking it is the default Steam installation of Skyrim. With that in mind, we can go ahead and go back into our common. We can now rename it. Make sure always name it something that you remember. Ender all. And then put back our Skyrim game to the default Skyrim. So, Endrawl is on its own, but if you were to go back into Endrawl and try to run the launcher, it's not going to work. It's going to tell you there's an error and it's going to put it back into the default Steam version of Skyrim, which has all the Dongar, Dragonborn, whatever else. It's going to make that change. And that's why we have to trick it into thinking it is its own version and then go back and change it into Endrawl. For my purposes, rather than making a full copy of my Skyrim folder with Mod Organizer, I want to start fresh. And what I did was, I want to install a new version of Mod Organizer into this setup. So of course I have a version of Mod Organizer, 1.3 is right there. I'm going to open this up and take out the folder of the zip that I downloaded from Nexus and put it into the Enderall version of Skyrim. I'm going to close that down. And we open up Mod Organizer. And we can now go down to modorganizer.exec and run it. No, no, yeah, these are all the first time installs. If you're, you're not, not familiar with Mod Organizer, this is not the time to learn. Go back. Do some basic stuff with the other Skyrim game. And you can see here we have a blank version of Mod Organizer. Of course, all it has is Update and Skyrim. And you can go into Archives. You can see everything is already checked for us. Data. Everything looks good there. There are no downloads and there are no saves. Well, this is my default version of Skyrim, so it thinks that it, all my saves or my old Skyrim saves, and that's fine. We're going to fix that in just a second. So our first job, we're going to minimize this down. We'll just get those skyrimprefs.ini. We'll go into our mod organizer profiles. You can see you have a default. We need to change that. We need to put skyrim.ini and skyrimprefs.ini. We need to put these back in here, copy them, and put them over. Replace those two files. Skyrim.ini, we're now looking good. There's the Enderall archives, so we're all set and ready to go there. We can now go ahead and go back to our main directory. I'm going to minimize that down. So we go back into Mod Organizer. If we manage it again, we can make a copy and put in Enderall. Click OK. We want to hit local saves and automatic archive and validation and close it. We select Enderall again. If you go into your any editor, there's our Enderall archive, so we know we've done it right. I'm going to make a few changes and I'll show you those what I do. Um, I do not want to go ahead and do any of the configurations for the Nexus because I will not be using any Nexus downloads. For this, I'll be using the download sections for my other main directory. Under here, under download directory, mod directory, and cache directory, click advanced. And I'm going to go where I keep all of my mod organizer downloads, which is under storage. And you can see mod organizer, Skyrim downloads, select folder. Of course, if you wanted to expand this open even more, you can see the full directory, Steam, Steam Apps, Commons, Skyrim, Enderall. Mod Organizer Mods, Skyrim Enderall, Mod Organizer Web Cache, right? Go ahead and click OK. Now when you refresh and go to your downloads, there's all of my downloads 
If I show hidden, you'll see them all. You can see all of my downloads ready to go. So if I were to pick something like Immersive HUD, manual, it'll go through, yeah, 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 yeah. These are all the tutorials. Looks good. And there it is. Go into plugins. I need to set up loot, and I'll be back when I do that real fast. There we go, and now we have loot, and it will run. And it will run appropriately. So it may give you some weird messages because it thinks that Drongar, Dragonborn, all that stuff is in there, but it's really not. So don't worry about that too much. You know, you can see it now ordered thing correctly. Skyrim, update, and iHUD. Okay, so we have our first mod installed, but you may be asking, what other mods can I use? Well, we need to go look at a few things. The first thing we're gonna do is open up our Enderall folder and we will go down to our Enderall, where is it? There we go, is the readme.txt. Open that up again. Remember, I kind of just glanced through it real fast and I didn't really show you everything that's in here. You know, there's lots of good information, but if you scroll down and you're going to see all the people that worked on this, and there's a whole bunch of people, a lot of names you may recognize. Keep scrolling down. And you can see right here, used resources. The Skyrim script extender is already installed, so you don't need to worry about that. The Sky UI by Sebastian Jenkel or Schlangster is already in there. One tweak, you saw that. Crash Fix is one of my favorite little mods by MEH321. NIF scope, NIF merge, chunk merge, and finis are part of the used resources, but they are not actually merge mods. You have a whole bunch of mods listed here, and there are a ton of them of mods they've, they've used portions of to get this all to work. And I want you to read through this so you know if a mod that has already been installed partly is already in there, and you may not need it. But that's just something to read. I'm going to close that down. I'm going to go back to the Sure AI site and we're going to go into Forum. And if you go down to Enderall, which is right there, and you go down to Modification, you can see the Enderall compatible mod list. And this was done by a poster by the name of Azucol, Azu, Azucard, Azucard, excuse me, Azucard, I messed it up. And he has a constantly updated list of a Google Docs, and we will open up that in a new page, and I will include this link in the description. You can see he's put together a pretty much updated mod list of things that he can do. So you can see some of the general information. If you go down to the bottom here, you've got compatible mods, unclear mods, and incompatible mods. We're going to start with, ink, with the compatible list, and you can see it is all by alphabetic order, and the little black bar means it's a new one. You can see all the mods that he has tested that work with Enderall. And you see the whole bunch, there's iHUD, that's why I installed it right away. And you see Leon Wolf's Better Shaped Weapons, you can see uh, Lightning During Thunder, that's, uh, I believe that's Minty's, is that Minty's? I forget, let me just check, Minty's? Yep, that's Minty's, Minty's Lightning works. But you can see more HUD works, quick light works, race menu works. If you want to install that ahead of time, you can. And you can just go through the whole list and it will include links to all of them. So you get an idea what to do there. The unclear mod list is probably requires additional testing. I would avoid this unless you're absolutely sure or you're an advanced modder and willing to test things out. And of course the incompatible mod list, these have been fully tested and probably will not work. Immersive Sound Compendium, remember Immersive Sounds, there was a mod that's already integrated into that. I would probably not mess with the sounds. And of course, the change logs. There is a list of mods that you can try in your mod, your new, brand new mod organizer that you've installed. And there you have it. I'm going to make a new version of the modagers.exec, create a shortcut, put it on my desktop. I'm going to change the properties, change icon, apply it, and click OK. So now we have a mod organizer that we need to rename. 
MO Ender all. There we go. So now I have a mod organizer with Ender all. And you can go ahead and play your game. Just keep in mind that every time you want to update the Ender all version, you need to go in and trick it again so that Skyrim, your default Skyrim is the underscore slash underscore Skyrim. And Skyrim Enderall is just renamed to Skyrim. And that's all we got. And it will run just fine. It runs just fine every single time, just like normal. And there we are. And that is the version using Enderall Skyrim version. We've tricked it into doing what we want. So you can play the game with a fresh new install of Mod Organizer and run it in parallel so you can play both games at the same time without having to do all that installation stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy Enderall. I'll be playing it. I'll be doing a let's play of it. And uh, it's, so far, it's fantastic. It looks just gorgeous. And I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. So that's it for now, guys. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel. And I'm signing off. <laughs>